<laughs> Sometimes I can't hear here. <laughs> that did scare the crap out of me. So. <laughs> Take in a deep breath of God's presence as we continue our Holy Week journey. Welcome to those of you who are present here in person, in the sanctuary, and in the balcony. 
Welcome those of you who are online right at this very moment. Mary Jane is your online host. Make sure to get something to eat and something to drink so that you can fully participate in Holy Communion. And welcome all of you participating at some time later on in this Holy Week. Together we are a faith family. Tonight we are taking a very, very important journey together. We are going to begin with the Last Supper and we will journey all the way to the cross. Allow yourself to experience the feelings, to hear the words, and to see how your life and the words of Scripture intertwine. Tomorrow at noon in our chapel, right by the front doors, we have a Good Friday service. You are welcome to come to that. The Good Friday service is only in person. And then Easter morning, everyone is welcome. 7 a.m. in the sanctuary, we'll be with our band to have a contemporary service. 9 to 9.45, there'll be fellowship time with treats in the lower level social hall. 10 a.m. worship service, complete with the Hallelujah Chorus and an Easter egg hunt for kids. So plan on being here Easter as we complete the Holy Week journey. And now, would you please rise as Reverend Marianne leads us in the call to worship. Friends, this is a day to remember. We remember remember the the Passover Passover meal Jesus Jesus shared with his his disciples. We remember Jesus washing the feet of his friends. We remember, and in remembering, we are called to serve one another. We remember and thank God for Jesus' presence with us then and now. Let us join our voices in the unison prayer of invocation. Ever-loving God, We gather together this evening just as friends gathered with Jesus in an upper room long ago. We come from different places, but we all come with dry and thirsty spirits. Remind us in the breaking of the bread of our need for you and of your sufficiency. Refresh us and make us whole with the cup of forgiveness. Draw us nearer to each other in mutual service and closer to you in the covenant of faithfulness and thanksgiving. As the night advances, deepen in us a sense of your steadfast love for us in Jesus Christ, our friend and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Let your mind's eye take you back to the time that Jesus roamed this earth. On a night such as tonight, the Jewish families gathered around tables together. They lit candles in preparation for the gathering darkness of night, and they prepared to observe the spiritual celebration of Passover. Jesus and his friends, they were together for the ceremonial meal in a room rented or loaned to them for the night. They reclined around a low table rather than sitting on chairs or on benches because in those times, reclining at meals, well, that was the sign of a free person. On the night of Passover, Jesus and all the other Jewish people celebrated the gift of freedom God gave them in leading their ancestors out of slavery in Egypt. On their Passover tables, there would be very special symbols and foods. There would be three loaves of flatbread, bread that had been baked before allowing it to rise. To eat this bread would remind them of how God led their ancestors from their situation of slavery so quickly that they didn't even have time to let their bread rise, but they threw it in the ovens to bake so that they would have food for the journey, and then they took it and they fled their oppressors. They left without any notion at all as to where they were going. They simply trusted God to lead them safely to a new land as free people. 
also on their table, would be the roasted shank bone of a lamb. The shank bone reminded them of the Paschal lamb, the lamb of sacrifice offered on the altar of the great temple in Jerusalem on Passover. A roasted egg was probably also present, for it too was one of the acceptable Passover offerings. Certainly there were bitter herbs to eat, reminding the people of the bitterness of the slavery their ancestors were compelled to endure. And there would be a dish of chopped fruit, the karoseth, to remind them of the mortar their forebears were forced to make into bricks for their slave masters. Tradition required that there be a green vegetable to eat after dipping it into the salt. The green vegetable was to celebrate the season of spring when Passover was observed. Dipping it into the salt was done to be reminded of the tears of the slaves who had no freedom until God rescued them. And of course, there was wine with the meal. The ritual of Passover meal called for several pourings of wine, and also a setting of a cup of wine was there in honor of the prophet Elijah, whose return was foretold. One of the rituals early in the meal was a ceremonial hand washing, not only to clean one's fingers before eating, but to demonstrate respect for God's creation from whom all food comes. On that particular night, as Jesus shared the Passover meal with his disciples, he carried a basin of water and a towel. And he proceeded not to invite his friends to wash their hands, as would be the custom, but instead he came and invited them to allow him to wash their feet as an act of respect and honor to each one of them. He told them that as he did this, he was giving them a new commandment that they were to love each other just as he loved them. The combination of Jesus' dramatic act and declaration of his love for his friends and his command for them to love each other, well, it unsettled his friends a bit. But finally, the meal proceeded to its conclusion where once again Jesus startled his friends. Taking the last piece of bread, the piece which had been set aside for the closing ritual, Jesus took it and he broke it and he passed it to his friends while he proclaimed to them, this is my body which will be broken for you. Remember this. And then he took that final cup, Elijah's cup of wine poured earlier and set aside, and he passed it to his friends and he said to them, this is the cup of the new covenant that will be sealed with my blood. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, remember me. And now his friends, they were truly puzzled. And they were disturbed, and and don't you think they were even beginning to get a bit frightened? They were distressed to hear Jesus talking like this, talking about his body being broken, asking them to remember him as though he would be going away from them soon. Well, we know the truth. And the truth is that soon things would come apart for them. Friendships and loyalties would be stretched. Sorrow hovering in the shadows just beyond the flickering candlelight. Tonight, on this Thursday of the week that is known as Holy Week, we gather around the Passover table. We prepare to dip the bread into Elijah's cup and to remember our Lord. As you partake in the meal this evening, remember that it was those very friends of Jesus who shared the Passover meal with him that evening who betrayed him and denied him and abandoned him. 
He was true to them, faithful even to death, but they wandered away from him when things began to get difficult, scary, uncomfortable, unpopular. The banquet table of Jesus and his friends. Our table of holy communion. It's a place and time of joy for our faith community. It's a place and time of celebration of hope and life in its fullness. Except, except on this one Thursday night of the year, when like those friends of Jesus, we don't yet know about Easter and resurrection. We only know about brokenness and emptiness and fear and denial and sacrifice. And love that leads to a windy hill and to a cross. As we prepare to come to this table of our Lord, let us stay seated and sing together number 2255 in the singing. And now we come to the table, the table of the Last Supper, the table of Holy Communion. And as we come, Jesus takes bread for us, gives thanks to God, and then breaks the bread. And he gives it to each of one, uh, one of us, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Eat of it in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he pours the cup. And he offers it to each one of us and says, This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink from the cup, remember me. Today on this night, when we come to the holy table, we receive bread, we receive the cup, and we prepare to walk with Jesus all the way to the cross. You are all invited to this table. 
All that is asked is that you be yearning to seek to know and follow Christ and live in his love. At the appropriate time, ushers will direct you forward by the center aisles. There are offering plates in the front and in the back where you are welcome to place your gifts. And then you will be given a piece of bread and you will be given a cup. In the center will be gluten-free elements if you need those. Eat with Jesus. Come to the table this evening. Will those serving please join us?
We now move from the table further into this journey called Holy Week into the Tenebrae as we remember the Passion. The Tenebrae takes place in near darkness. It dates back to the fourth century and recalls the seven shadows falling on Christ in the last hours of his earthly life. As the Passion story unfolds, the darkness increases as light by light by light is extinguished. Join with me in the litany of light and darkness. God is light in whom there is no darkness at all. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And this is the judgment that light has come into the world.
in the service of the shadows. You will hear portions of the scripture story. Then you will be asked to reflect on how it impacts you and your daily living. And then light by light, candle will be extinguished. When it comes time for you to join in singing, be watching in your bulletin, it won't be announced because we want to journey together without interruption. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, one after the other, Surely not I, Lord. Surely not I, Lord. Surely not I. The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go, just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus answered, Yes, it is you. I remember Judas's betrayal, and I wonder, have I ever betrayed someone I loved or some cause in which I truly believed? Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered. This very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. I remember how Jesus was deserted. And I wonder... When there is trouble, do I run? Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him, and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. I remember our Lord's agony of soul, and I wonder, in times of tough decision, do I have such agony of soul to know and to do the will of God.
Then seizing Jesus, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And Peter went outside, and he wept bitterly. I remember Peter's denial, and I wonder, have I stood by my friends in trouble, or has my loyalty only been in fair weather? Now, it was the governor's custom at the feast to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew it was out of envy that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, Barabbas they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called Christ? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. I remember the crowd calling for Jesus' crucifixion. I remember Pilate washing his hands of responsibility. And I wonder, have I ever been part of a crowd and acted in a way that I never would have acted alone? Have I been guilty of shirking my responsibilities? Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, Hail King, King of, of the Jews. Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away 
to crucify him. I remember Jesus being humiliated, and I wonder, have I ever been party to making fun of others? Have I denied anybody their dignity by my failure to speak and act? When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He He saved saved others. others. Let Let him him save save himself himself if he is the Christ of God, God, the the chosen chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him white vinegar and said, If you you are are the the king king of the Jews, Jews, save save yourself. Then there was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. I remember Christ's death on the cross 
And I wonder, do I realize he died for me? We are witnesses to Jesus' death. The service is ended. Tomorrow, walk with Christ in his death. Return in three days to worship the risen Lord.